Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to the channel. As I'm sure you're aware, this week we saw E3 with pretty much everyone in the gaming world, apart from PlayStation, um, there and showcasing what they have in the pipeline. And a lot of it was kind of meh, but there were a few bits and pieces that really stood out to me. So I just want to go through some of the bits and pieces that caught my eye personally. I won't be kind of analysing so much what we saw or kind of breaking down bit by bit the information that they kind of shared with us, but just giving you my thoughts on these particular games and why they stood out for me really. Before we begin, I will just have a kind of honourable mention for Pokemon Sword and Shield. A lot of what we saw was kind of explained to us the week previously in the Nintendo Direct. Granted, we got to see a bit more kind of hands-on with that, with um, people kind of in the wild area and using the Dynamax feature actually within gameplay, as well as just having it explained to us within a bit of a trailer. But to be honest, if you want more in-depth information on that, I would suggest heading over to Pokey Pidge's YouTube channel because he has really kind of gone into a lot more detail, as you would expect, on the kind of Pokemon Sword and Shield side of things. But I am still very interested in those games, or that game, because I guess it's sort of just one game. I am very interested in it and hopefully will be purchasing it, if not directly at release, not too long afterwards. Sticking with Nintendo, there were a couple of bits that really stood out to me in their presentation. Two of which happened to be Link related. Obviously we got the announcement that Breath of the Wild 2 was in development. Not too much to say about this at uh, this current stage because we don't know kind of how long that has been in development for we don't know how far along they are with it we don't really know even a window as to when it's likely to be released I would imagine sometime around hopefully the release of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox's Project Scarlet but who knows, maybe that will be quite a good release to drop in there when those consoles do come to the market. Just to kind of steer people back towards the Switch, that would be quite a good idea. Obviously it is a hugely popular game, the, uh, the original one for the Switch, and was at the time the Switch launched was kind of the main reason to buy the Switch. And... I, although I've played the main campaign of it, there is still a hell of a lot in that game for me to kind of uncover and dive into. So, a sequel to that, yes, thank you very much. Also, we saw a bit more of Link's Awakening, and we also got a release date for that as well. It will be released on the 20th of September, which is excellent news. It's a lot sooner than I personally anticipated. Obviously, we only really heard at the beginning of the year that this was something that they were working on. So to see that kind of initial announcement through to release date really within sort of six to eight months, that's kind of what I want companies to be doing more in the future rather than announcing a game and then it taking years and years and years to develop and get changed and cancelled and then we finally get a release on it after we've kind of almost got bored of it before it's even come to fruition. The art style is nice and kind of cute and very kind of Switch-esque if that makes sense. There's also a dungeon builder in there which will be quite good. I'm presuming the kind of harder you make your dungeon the better items you can find in there and I believe that there will be a feature or at least a pretty sure I've read of a feature to kind of upload those dungeons and download other people's and kind of try and make the hardest dungeons for other people to crack kind of post them online and score off of those. 
Moving away from Nintendo, I kind of had to get my PlayStation fix from the other development companies because obviously Sony were not there. So we didn't see anything to do with the likes of Death Stranding or Last of Us 2 because obviously they are PlayStation exclusives. But one thing that will be coming to the PlayStation 4, and thankfully it will be the PlayStation 4 and not the PlayStation 5, is Cyberpunk 2077. And we got a release date for this as well, the 16th of April 2020, which is certainly a lot sooner than I personally thought it would be. Uh, this kind of makes me think that the next generation releases will be kind of winter next year. So this will be one of kind of the last big releases on this current generation before we go to Project Scala and PlayStation 5. So you kind of want to have a big enough gap really between the release of, of these kind of big titles and the next generation of uh, consoles. Unfortunately we didn't really see any gameplay it was all kind of cinematic stuff and storyline based bits and pieces but it was reported by some people that what we saw was in-game stuff even though it was cinematic so hopefully the game can look as good as what we saw and we also got a reveal of Keanu Reeves which was a bit of a surprise this kind of blew the internet up I took it as a cool okay I guess um, I haven't really seen him in anything other than The Matrix, so, yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's certainly not something that would make me buy the game. I was very interested in it beforehand anyway. I just hope that in the next few months we actually get to see a bit more gameplay, because the last kind of reveal that we got way back when was when the game was still a lot further back in development and they explained at the time that the likelihood was that the game was going to kind of develop and evolve and change from what we saw although what we saw was very good so it would be nice to see what this game is like maybe in the next sort of two or three months just to kind of get an idea of what we will actually be getting our hands on from a gameplay standpoint but very, very, very excited for this game. And the other couple of games that really piqued my interest, they are both Square Enix games, and one of which is the new Avengers game. Now this is a game set completely separate from the cinematic universe. They've kind of written their own story in, they've got their own interpretations of the characters that you can play as. This kind of annoyed people on the internet. I'm not really sure why. Oh, Iron Man doesn't look like Robert Downey Jr. So? He's being played by Nolan North. He's not going to be anything like Robert Downey Jr. And like, oh, the, you've got Thor there as well. Well, he's nothing like Chris Hemsworth. Well, he's not going to be because they're not basing this on films. They're taking the kind of lore that's already been created within the comics and branching into their own universe and their own kind of character developments, their own set pieces within this story. And it was explained that from kind of the offset you can play as five different characters, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow and the Hulk. But it was also explained that once the game is released in the kind of months and years to follow they're almost going to kind of keep it going sort of as a live service but without subscription charges without charging you for any extra dlc without loot boxes and without microtransactions anything like that and they were going to feed in other characters and other stories so whether that means we see kind of appearances from the likes of Spider-Man or Ant-Man or anything like that, Doctor Strange coming in and having their own kind of personal DLC or whether that feeds into the main storyline and develops it a bit further, I'm not really sure. But that is a nice way to kind of keep the game growing and growing and growing as the months and years kind of go on. 
quite surprisingly, we even got a release date for this as well, May 15th, 2020. So obviously they're going to have to keep this going and going and going once the next generation of consoles have kind of landed. Whether this means they're able to kind of easily port it over to there once all the content has finished and they release kind of next generation versions of the game with everything in right from the beginning, who knows. But it's certainly one to keep our eyes on. It shows kind of the fall of the Avengers and them rebuilding themselves um, when the general populace see them as the enemy basically. So it'll be very interesting to kind of get really under the skin of all those characters and see them develop and grow throughout the game. An action adventure game that is very much kind of story and character based, very much up my street. Thank you very much. And finally, of course, we have Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, we did get the release date revealed to us a couple of days before in a kind of short trailer for March the 3rd, 2020. But what they showed us was kind of an extended version of that trailer, which introduced Tifa for the first time. Obviously, we knew she was going to be about, but we hadn't seen any footage of her yet. And we got to see kind of more of an explanation as to how the battle system will work with kind of basic attacks and then developing bars in order to then unleash better, stronger attacks. And we saw this in action with the fight with Barrett and Cloud versus the Guard Scorpion, kind of the first boss where you're setting the bomb at the reactor. And it was very kind of cinematic, it was very open. You were having to kind of chop and change between the characters for close and ranged attacks because he was kind of darting about all over the place. But I think the most intriguing thing was the fact that they have got what they said was two Blu-rays worth of content for this game. And the first disc that will be released on the 3rd of March next year just covers Midgar. Now, it was announced beforehand that this game was likely to be episodic and we'd all kind of gone a bit eh, okay right well if that means we kind of get our hands on the first bit of it earlier then all right rather than wait right until the kind of whole game is developed before we get to play anything but I think a lot of people were expecting it to maybe cover a bit more than just Midgar Especially as it's been hinted that there are only going to be two discs. So on one disc we have just Midgar. And then on the other disc we have the entire rest of the game. At least that's how it seemed to be explained in their presentation. I may have missed something there. And if I have, please let me know. But from what I could work out, it was a case of disc one is just Midgar. And as soon as you escape Midgar and make your way over towards Calm to go into the whole backstory thing in, in Calm, then from sort of there onwards is disc two right up until the end of the game. I kind of expected it to at least encompass maybe that first island. So Calm, the Chocobo Ranch going through towards Junon and then setting sail towards the Costa del Sol and maybe once you land at Costa del Sol that's the end of the first disc. That's kind of how I saw it in my head. But to only have Midgar, I mean, for starters, they'll need to really flesh out what happens in Midgar. We'll need to be able to go to every single sector and really kind of delve into who the people are that live there and really expand upon the story that we have because although in the original game the whole Midgar section is probably the biggest overall section it does take a while to get out to the kind of world map which in kind of previous Final Fantasies was never kind of that big a thing you get an initial set piece and then you're out into the world you might not be able to access everywhere but you're in the world map and then certainly on 8 and 9, 9 maybe a bit more so is kind of closer 
whereby you don't really get into the world map until you have escaped the ice cave and, and even then you can't really go that far and I guess with 8 you are kind of restricted because you get out of garden pretty much straight away and there's not really that far to go because you're on a tiny little island so you have to wait until you've kind of done the dollar and timber bits before you can really see what the world is like but even when you get into the overworld of 7 you can't really go that far because there's calm and there's the chocobo ranch and that's it really in that first section and until you kind of then go through that cave that really then only opens up Junon and um, Fort Condor that's about all that's there so there's not any, and although that first island looks quite big there's not really a lot there outside of Midgar but that is the the kind of biggest initial area from any Final Fantasy game I can think of. So it kind of makes sense to focus one whole section on that, fine. But to only have two discs for the entire game, and one disc is just Midgar, very odd. But needless to say, we will get to play it in March of next year. So thank God it's finally coming. Would have been nice if it had been this side of Christmas, but what can you do? So there we go. They were my kind of highlights from E3. I'm sure you had your own personal highlights and lowlights from what we saw. Please let me know either way what they were in the comments below. You can also let me know on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly or on my Facebook page at that British Guy 86 but until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.